Okay, so right now I'm working on scene 8 out of 11 scenes and um, for Pilgrim's Progress. I've just finished deciding on all of the different takes for the lines between myself uh, playing the role of Christopher Pilgrim and Azer, played by John Sippel. That's why these are called Sippel 2. That's from his second recording session, his third, and so on. Um, and this this... This track here is what that looks like when I've picked out all those different takes, um, sometimes assembling multiple different takes to put one monologue together. Uh, and then once I've stitched all that together, ultimately this is from, I mean, there you got his fifth recording session starting here at his third. So it's a pretty wide palette that I've uh, got here to work with. And I stitch that all together and then I export that file. Uh, and call it, you know, something else, Sipple PPS8, and then I re-import that into here so I can work with one file instead of all these little uh, snippets. So then I just mute this, because I still might want that, you know, those original snippets for some reason later on, but I set those aside for now, and I'm looking at this one giant file here, and uh, you might notice these little blue dots here. Uh, that's for a tool called um, Envelopes, creating envelopes, and... Uh, you know, I'm still not sure of the exact usage of that word in technical jargon, but if I had known about envelopes uh, when working on Spirit Blade, it would have been a very different <laughs> sounding project. Um, but uh, creating a gain envelope allows me to even out the sound quite a bit. You'll notice that in the waveform here, we've got spikes in John's uh, lines here, and uh, I, I want to be able to have even the the, the the softer parts of his lines all kind of really stand out and so he can get the richness in his tone in those in his lower inflections. Uh, here's just a little sample of what's going on here. This is a dangerous place, Christopher. That, that monster, where... Be at peace. It is gone now. What are you doing here? A man. So we got those little, what are you doing here? That lower part of his voice, uh, if I don't boost the volume a little bit in in relation to the other lines, it might get lost a little bit, but if I boost the volume at just that one spot, um, then uh, I, I can maintain that richness. So these, these blue little nodes here and this blue line here, that's representing the volume on this individual track. So I turn it down when he's spiking and getting a little bit louder, and I turn it back up again when he's getting soft, so that in the end, the, the volume is pretty even all the way throughout. And the, the way I kind of do that is I, I choose like this decibel mark right here, and I kind of aim for all the lines to generally hit around that area. Let's see how close I've gotten on, on uh, John Sipple's lines here. <sighs> this is a dangerous place, Christopher. That, that monster, where... Be at peace. It is gone now. What so are... I'm usually content for them to float. I mean, 12 is what I'm aiming for here. But you, I'm usually content for them to kind of float around this area right here with 12 as the center point. If I notice them getting too high and getting into the red and, you know, threatening distortion, or too low and dropping out and getting lost in the other things that I will layer, the other effects and stuff and music that I'll layer in later, uh, then I boost or lower it uh, as I need to. And this can be a pretty time-consuming process. I'll kind of give you an idea uh, here's where I'm working at right now. I've just finished this section here, and I'm about to listen to this section, uh, and I'm going to have to lower some of these spikes here and make adjustments, so uh, um, let's take a listen here. Only way I'll survive. You're not the first to read the Chronicles. Others have taken this journey and, like you, felt the despair of their own exposure. It flows down and trickles off them, given form by the same curse that rests upon you now. That darkness gathers here creating this swamp, inviting cruel denizens of the other world to dwell here and feed on victims. For nearly 2,000 years, the Absolute has dispatched craftsmen day and night. So you see now how that volume kind of gets out of control. So uh, here's what I do, just bit by bit. I'm uh, going through the lines here and watching uh, the resulting uh, volume level over here and making changes as needed. That darkness. Okay, so I'm going to put a little node here. And drop just this teeny little section here a bit. See what happens. You know, that darkness. That's not bad. I lose a little bit, oops. I lose a little bit of, um, 
the first part of that line. So I'll bring this over like this. That darkness gathered. Yeah, it's not bad. I'll listen again. Oh, that darkness. Mm, starts off a little bit on the soft side. Oh, that darkness gathers heat. That's nice. Now I'm losing some of this darkness here. That darkness. That's nice. That darkness gathered. Now I'd like that ness of darkness to be even just a little bit stronger in his voice. But you've noticed I've topped out here. So my choice at this point is either to boost the overall track, which I don't want to do because that's going to screw up, you know, the work that I've done before. Um, or I can just keep working and then get this, you know, adjust this as best I can with as many nodes as I can, and then export this file again, and then import it back in with all the changes made in, and then start this process over again uh, and boost this to a higher volume level. I mean, I try when I'm doing this to start out with the overall track at a high enough level um, that I don't run into this kind of situation, um, but, uh, you know, I can't always predict, and... Uh, yeah, so <laughs> there you have it. But hopefully that gives you an idea of just kind of the uh, detailed process involved here sometimes, the painstaking detail that goes into each of these lines to make them uh, as, as uh, easy on the ears as they can possibly be.